Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last news of Europe in which we're playing as America with our leader, Margaret Chase Smith, Inauguration Day. Today, for the first time in our nation's illustrious history, <clears throat> a, hist a woman sits in the Oval Office, not as a follower, but as a leader. However, that is not the only thing that is changing for too long. America strained under the weights of humiliation brought by the Akagi Accords for too long. America, you have struggled to break free of your corrupt political landscape. For too long, you've been moored in the past by the ill decisions of weak leaders. Today, that ends today. America will march forwards and towards strength and unity and liberty for all people of the world. Today, the city will once more sit atop the hill. Today, the eagle spreads its wings. Tens of thousands of people of all races, colors, and creeds gathered along the broad stretch of the National Mall, which erupted in applause and cheers at the end of the new Madam President's speech. President Margaret Chase Smith stood slightly taller, a grand smile across her face, and a new fire in her heart. America wanted this. America needed this. America needed her. Hail to the chief. We salute her one and all, which we are using or playing as a center NPP, so we do have the option of fighting tyranny since 1776. But I will explain how I got here as time goes on, and I would really like to get the ports back, but... We'll see what happens, but let's begin with the Smith administration. The American people have spoken. Margaret Chase Smith, the first woman to hold the office, will lead America into the next decade. But as a revelry from the inaugural parties and society events in Washington comes to an end, President Smith takes stock of the Oval Office, knowing getting elected was the easiest part. To keep the NPP unified seems like a Sisyphean task, and should it be needed, Smith may find her best option to be siding with the most influential wing of the party. However, should she break, side with an unpopular wing and break the party, oh, the NPP will have very few options left. So, uh, let's take a look at this. So, there are 21 Republicans, 23 Democrats, 40 far-right senators, as well as 14 center uh, members as well. So, that's not bad, especially if you want to do center stuff. So, with the Smith administration, we have a couple options. We can go down the left side with... NPPPL, which is basically non-existent. We can go down the center with a single platform. Or, well actually it's right even here, right here too. So, general welfare, more perfect union, as well as for domestic tranquility. But you have to get to the this one to do the more of the right side of the focus tree. So, let me know in the comments below, guys. Should we do all three paths as best as possible? Because doing the left side of the path might be pretty darn difficult without any... Uh, far left or uh, senators, so <laughs> let me know in the comments below whether we should or not. And, and technology really doesn't matter at this point, so. Um, how did I get here? Well, we start off, of course, with Nixon. I think I passed the civil rights. I got Bennett elected and basically did nothing as Bennett. It was a do-nothing Bennett campaign in which I was just kind of sitting there. I was doing the military stuff and we were doing so well, and we've done so well, that apparently our annual debt interest is negative 0.5%. I did like a few of the Bennett focuses, but mostly just stuff about, um, oh, actually, I was cutting down the debt pretty, pretty, pretty quickly, but we're going to need some PP probably, so I'm not going to touch this anymore. Um, yeah, so I did nothing as Bennett, literally did nothing, and I had the African mandates survive as long as possible, literally up until, until like January of 1969, and it was colossally bad. Look at the stability, it's super bad, we have the American despair still, and we also have minus 68% war support, so not good, but the road ahead. At the crack of dawn, following the inauguration, President Smith was already pouring herself a second cup of coffee while grimacing at the magnitude of the work ahead. Though the press raved about how Smith, the Grand Dame of the NPP, or Grand Dame, had transformed the victory party into a united front against the RDs, few knew how fragile the party really was. The party had nearly consumed itself after 64, with a progressive and labor-friendly center group now led by the avowed socialist Michael Harrington clashed incessantly with George Wallace's far-right bloc, espousing states' rights and free business. The two only begrudgingly agreed on actively resisting Japan, which the RDs paid plenty of lip service to anyway. As party divisions escalated openly going into the midterm, Smith, whose tenure in Washington, orthodox economics, and Maine liberalism could open doors across the party, had sat the two factions down. She flatly warned that her squabbles, or their squabbles, were hemorrhaging support for the NPP, unless they put aside their differences behind a novel candidate, Smith herself. <clears throat> Wallace and Harrington had grudgingly agreed, if only because the alternative was a political wilderness. But now that Smith had won the White House, in defiance of political gravity in the NPP, reality would soon come crashing back down. And although Smith has her own ambitions, in labor, healthcare, women's rights, the fight against Japan, none of them would matter if the NPP went up in smoke. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. 
and forging a better party. Though the NPP frequently mocks the RDs as a political Frankenstein, the reality is that the NPP is hardly any different. The merger between the liberal, labor-friendly, progressive wing and the segregationist, pro-business blocs only pro properly function so long as both groups could point at a common enemy in the RDs. Now that the RDs are in retreat and the NPP holds the reins of power, the competing imperatives of the NPP centers and far-right factions are certain to clash. Unless the party can't find a way to turn a tenuous truce into a lasting political legacy. To successfully reform the party, we must compromise with both the CNPP and the segregationists, while making too many concessions of our own political principles. But if we favor one side too heavily, we risk a dangerous division of the party and even the end of the party itself. Cool. And I do want to show you guys this. Ooh, actually, let's suppress the Democrats for now. Because we just suppress the Republicans. So the RDs have completely collapsed. Their unity is gone. American society is united, though. And we're looking pretty well together. And you know what? Maybe it'll look a little better. Let's, let's increase our stuff. They're working well together well. Great. And we've just finished off the last technology we need for the CIA. Okay, another dot. Less than 100 billion. Thank you, Bennett. You've done a great job for that. But also, with Smith here. Actually, we can close it out of this one. Because I just want to show you that. The NPP is working well together for now. Left wing is irrelevant and displeased. The center is significant and ambivalent, as well as the right, and they're influential. The southern wing is influential and ambivalent as well. And the fascist wing is irrelevant and displeased. Talk to the leaders. A dialogue with the progressive wing, improving their opinion of us and their influence in the party. Talk to the right leaders. Significant, influential, and bubble into us. Not bad. Publicly support the right. Divert funds to the centrist states. Suppress the far left. Oh, that's cool. Suppress the Yaquis. Well, they're not really relevant. So we have a very lot of southern wing and center and right wing. I think we're looking okay right now. We're getting together quite well. Operational success is good. I just want to pretty much finish this stuff off and get some more pro-American sentiment just because it gives us some PP because we're probably going to need that quite a bit especially with things that we want to do for this campaign all right so Beach Boys found murder if you want to read about that please go ahead I already don't know which path I want to go but like I said earlier if you want me to do all three paths please let me know in the comments below just because we already have this save it took me probably two two and a half hours to get to this point I stayed up until like 4 a.m. trying to get to this point so <laughs> please do consider leaving a like on the video but um, because we have so many far-right senators, we might go with working with walls. But lessons from history. President Smith had been quick to assemble a kitchen cabinet of trusted friends from the state's the Senate to work on the task of binding the MPP together before they inevitably start sniping at each other on the debate floor. As the last of the Circle of Five filed into the Oval Office on a sleepy Saturday at morning, smiling over their new access to the center of American political power, President Smith decided to impress upon them the gravity of the challenge they faced. Gentlemen, do any of you recall the tragedy of antebellum Whig Party? Smith opened, noticeably tapping a stack of history books she conveniently placed on the desk. The expressions of everyone else in the room tightened instantly. Smith smiled, of course. Everyone knew that the story of how one of the major political parties of the pre-Civil War era had imploded, fracturing under the weight of its own contradictions concerning the great question of its day. Good old slavery. I'm not saying that the NPP is going, to, going the way of the Whigs, but with Walls on a ride and Harrington to the left, we're not too far from that scenario either. Smith paused, letting the room absorb the magnitude of the task at hand. The papers are saying that having a woman in the Oval Office is history in its own right, but any president is judged by the legacy they leave behind, and I refuse to have this administration be a footnote to the divisions in our own party. A house divided. Oh, crud. Um, I might have to replay this if I want to do the left, honestly, just because we don't have that many senators. But, I'll be honest, like, online, I was trying to find guides for Margaret Chase Smith, and there's, like, none. There's absolutely none. There's only guides how to get her, but not actually how to play as her. Not really too much, so. <clears throat> with 40 senators. But with the Republicans at, how many senators? Uh, it's, well, I don't want to look at that one. This is easier to do. Uh, 21, 14, you can get about 35. You can pull 15 from Democrats and the far right. You might be able to do stuff. This is probably going to be a challenge, but... I think for a good path for the first campaign as Margaret Chase Smith, and because we're a center, I think we'll just go with what unites us first. Though the MPP finds itself riven with disagreements, it must remain a united family in the face of the RDs and the myriad challenges America faces. There's no, no denying the issues the party faces, but with a fresh coat of paint, a firm grip on Congress, and the common enemies of the RDs and the Empire of Japan, the MPP will realize that there is indeed more that unites us than divides us. More stability, less political power, which is fine, whatever. It takes time to remind the party why it exists, but focusing on the issues that unites us, Japan and the RDs, will be a reliable way to bring the party in line. And we'll grow a little more unified, which is fine. Hunting for headlines? Cool. Minus 30 billion in the deficit. I mean, I I actually tried it. I think I, think I tried to pass the Silver Act as Bennett. I don't think it went through. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it didn't go through, but that's okay. Hey, political power, we love it. We love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So we don't do that stuff at all. So, significant. Yeah, we'll just go to the center. So public support the center. 
Um, actually, ooh, military police slaughterhouse five. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And so it goes. But as long as they're not pissed off at us, what's the highest level you can get for that? That's my question. Um, twenty-two and a half. Is that the highest you can get? Maybe. Maybe. Cool. What well, unites us? The Great Divide. Let's do rally the base. The voters and party rank and file are the lifeblood of any robust political party, and the MPP is no different. We'll have to make sure that they stay aligned with the policies that the party is taking in order to ensure that they keep coming out to, coming out to support us. And by us, we mean us, President Margaret J. Smith, not Michael Harrington or George Wallace. Um, I do wonder though, I don't know, is there... Do we only play this Margaret J. Smith for four years? Because it is 69 already, so... I hope we have eight years of content, eight years of doing stuff, because I would like to get Hawaii back. Um, so, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Holding court. President Smith and Vice President Agnew steeled themselves as they held court with Michael Harrington and George Wallace. The bi-weekly conclave was the senior most form of the MPP empowerment to resolve disputes between the two, which meant that the only most intractable disagreements were ever made on it on the agenda. Smith and Agnew had come to dread the meeting, which often saw them futilely mediating between Wallace's outbursts and Harrington's preaching. More than once, the meeting ended only when Harrington and Wallace were exhausted, offering concessions just to get out of the room. The president and the vice president reviewed the day's agenda. Union security agreements and the corporate tax a recipe for disaster. The minutes passed, Harrington pressed his case for ensuring that unions could collect operational dues from all employees, unionized or not. Wallace listened silently before laying out his demand for a 5% cut in the corporate tax rate to incentivize investment. The two eyed each other and said nothing, and implied quid, quid pro quo that stunned Smith and Agnew into silence. After the meeting ended on schedule, Agnew raised his eyebrow. Do you think those two are warming up to each other? Smith folded her arms as she sunk into her chair. Probably not, but if this is as good as it gets, I'll take it. We can ride together, and we have Spiro Agnew here. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. We have Jean Kirkpatrick. She might be running for president soon. Casper Weinberger, okay. As well as John Stennis. Okay, cool. Well, let's go and try to rally the base. As we cut down some more debt. And all this technology. I never research a lot of this, like the center path for IFVs, but I just... I ran out of things I really care about researching, so... Until we get to 1970, of course. We are part of change. Well, let's get out the vote, maybe? Drawing a line. We could use more war support, too. Crack the whip for the good of the people. <clears throat> How do we do this? We need one of the... Oh, we need only one. Get out the vote. Um, we want to be against this establishment. The legacy of failure lead us forward. Well, let's keep going down here. We can always come back up here and do stuff up here if we really need to, but get out the vote. The battle for Russia, Eastern. Oh. Um, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. This doesn't seem very unique to Margaret Chase Smith, so if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Getting the base fired up is only half the battle. We need to make sure people can vote, and are constantly reminded to do so even on years when a presidential election isn't on the agenda. Town halls, phone banks. Uh... <clears throat> Volunteering, advanced registration, and campus recruitment, every step we take to boost an active support for the party is a step well taken. And we'll pay dividends years down the line. Everyone wants to be the first to join the winning team. Uh, oh, if you... Oh boy, what is this? So ordered? Well, if you want to be that, please go ahead as well. Well, let's see if Germany wants to bomb the heck out of us immediately. Probably they do. They probably do. Minus 30 billion, not bad. I don't know how we got... I really don't know how we got no debt interest, but whatever. Uh, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. We can take a hit, let them pass. And actually, you know what? I'm going to show you all my saves. Or just at least save the game. Just because um, if I have to come back to this, well, then so be it. Cool. We can take a hit. No. Tell them the Germans to back off. We want to look very good in front of everyone here. Good. Hey. Oh, no. Is it for anything? 27.4. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty good. Hey. Okay, they fold. Okay, saving the game was still important. Because I don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. The hidden arm. Okay, more naval stuff just in case. Global range operations, very cool, very, very cool. My goal is to cut down the debt to zero, because if I'm waiting to play as Bennett when Toolbox 3 comes out, so we'll see what happens. Oh my gosh, this looks like a mess. Omsk, what happened to Omsk? Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia, is that Samara? No, that's, oh, 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 maybe it is. All right, cool. Cool, get out the vote. But for the good of the people. Uh, it's time to take your case directly to the voters, laying out a vision of the future under an NPP administration to last a decade or more. America strong, America united, America prosperous. All this can be made possible under the NPP. There's no more pussyfooting around to make the status quo, no half-hearted compromise for the sake of stability. The NPP goes forth to shape the future, but only the voters choose to seize it. <clears throat> Invitation from Germania. Big Daddy Bald Man Borman has sent a formal invitation to our nation. 
is invited us to participate as an observer in the North Sea Oil Conference, which would be designed to settle disputes around surrounding the German pro proclamation of North Sea Oil rights. While the Germans would listen to the protestations of England is beyond us, nevertheless, we shall send representatives of the American government to watch over proceedings and ensure that our English allies are treated fairly. Let's hope this conference heralds good news. And it looks like, did Wilson win? <laughs> Apparently he did. I didn't play him at all. But they're in our lines already. All nations accept. Very cool. <clears throat> if you want to read about both these, please go right ahead. The oil shall flow, and the conference awaits. <clears throat> not bad. Cool. I'm meeting in Bremen, if you want to read about that. Because this is just, this is not unique to MCSL. Who knew the Reich could solve issues with diplomacy? A more perfect union? We'll do that one next. Nobody ever said that the work of governing in a coalition would be easy. The thrones of consultations, listening, and rallying around a common enemy seems endless. But, at the end of it all... When all has been said and done, we are confident that the center and the far right still find themselves on the same side, pointing in the same direction. The creation of a better, stronger America for tomorrow. Oh, Jimmy's offers? These terms are outrageous? Oh, boy. Ex oh, exercise of Pacrum? More naval XP. Let's fill this vacancy. Which we'll look in just a little bit to see where we're at for that, so. Protect our businesses? I would love to get Hawaii back, but you know it is what it is. Oh, I got a week left for that stuff. Minus 30 billion, plus 9 billion. Oh, last voyage of the Stonewall boss. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. I've read this like two or three times already, so. Cool. Beach. Oh, yeah, the murder thing. If you want to read about that, please go ahead as well. As well as last voyage of the USS SS United States. There you go. You can read that too. The end of an era. Less than 90 billion we shall overcome. There you go. There's that as well. Fire to the fuel. And close firing ports. Very cool. And let's keep doing some more naval stuff. Her fitting cost goes up by 10%. Kick lines and tear gas. An incredible sight. Cool. Alright, intelligence analysis. Uh, for the good of the people. And the more perfect union. We'll see what we can do about that. 30. Wow, well, that's really cool. All the way up to 30. At least we have no Yakiites or Stalinites. No. Hall. Hallites. Hallites? Hallites? Something like that. And can we build any more? We're building a lot of radar everywhere. I ran out of things to build, I'll be honest. It's kind of disappointing. And actually, I was converting some military factories to civvies as well. So, yeah, I really ran out of places to build stuff. Um, Anti-air, maybe? I don't know, because anti-air is not going to be our end-all be-all. Just because it's so fast to make. I even cut on construction spending by a whole bunch. So, we should be okay with that stuff. Cool, South needs anti-air. Uh, let's grab some logistics, I guess. Why not? Hey, the Iberian Wars. Goodbye. I didn't even invest in Iberia at all. Also, I didn't even get Italy on our side, too. So, they joined the, <laughs> the Go Prosperity Sphere. Ah, uh, that is disgusting. That is that is actually pretty bad. All right, so let's take a look. Scottish nominee, we're centrists. So, we want to make sure that things are balanced, right? Say, the Supreme Court, there are seven conservatives and two liberals. Well, let's go with the liberal option. It'll balance things out just a little bit more. So, then we'll have seven, six conservatives and three liberals, and they'll still be... Conservative wing will still be in power, so that's okay. All right, more, for more perfect union. Now I don't know which way. Power to the states, counter the influence of the C and PP. Probably not what we want to do. Consolidate our southern support base. That's not bad. Working out our differences, grow a little more unified, and then compromise on welfare. I kind of want to do that, but let's go working on our differences because that seems the most centrist option. Even if the individual NPP congressmen and senators are acting more or less together in Congress, George Walsh and Michael Harrington are taking every opportunity to take petty pot shots at each other, as they should. Sooner or later, that behavior will spread. We've got to make sure that they're on the same page on key pieces of legislation so that at least we seem to be presenting a united front because no one likes the R's and D's here. So apparently she's from Maine. So if you like to read about her, please go right ahead. She's the first woman to serve in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. All right, concerning reports. Oh, boy. Uh, about Japanese sub. A lone wolf can be scared off easier than a whole whale pack. Cool. So good. So good. Thank you, Bennett, for... Wow, this looks really bad. <laughs> oh, Iberia. We love Iberia here. Sometimes. Dots on the screen. Get me to Washington. There's an entire Japanese fleet on the way. Oh, boy. Actually, we're pretty divided here. <clears throat> So, MCS is a authoritarian democrat, whereas Jackson social democracy, LBJ is liberal democracy, liberal democracy, social democracy, Ben is conservative, and we have quite a 
five percent of that BBL. Wow, look at that. And one percent for Yaki Woodstock. There you go. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. The hunter's quarry. Heaven forbid they caught a bluff. All right then. Great. Great. And a single platform. The MPP can't keep living bill to bill and compromise alone. People are keeping track of slights, favors, anything that can be used to keep score between the center and the far right. Sooner or later, something will give. The party needs a single platform to work on all the compromises out of its system at once, so that the average American knows that the MPP is working for them and not against each other. We're crafting a platform. Oh, we lose political power. We already get like 0.62 every single day. That's really bad. I should be probably spending some more. Oh, wait. Are we crafting a bill now or is it? Oh, do we already craft it? Oh, crap. They're satisfied. Everyone's satisfied. Oh, anyone that matters is satisfied. Um, okay. Oh. Hey. The Russian state. It just... Wow. Okay. Wait. Oh, we, did, we did that one yet. We'll probably go liberal. Yeah. Cool. And it is so close. So, I'm just going to do that. Let's go for 1970 tech first. <sighs> 82 and a half billion. A single platform. And we are very high unity in the OFM. American despair is not very good. Token civil rights, of course, as well as the last bastion of liberty. Not bad. The bottom of the pile. Um, this seems like a bug because it says President Bennett. It's a dangerous lower relationship with the Republicans. Razor, but what? Um, Bennett. This is a bug. Okay, this is definitely a bug. Razor relationship with the Dixiecrats. Uh. Okay, I mean, uh, that, that, Bennett's gone, guys. The, the, the game, yeah, Bennett's not here anymore. You piss off everybody by not doing anything, so... Trying to please everybody screws you up. Let's see, a robust safety, safety net, a strong national defense, a place to do business. The National Progressive Party's always looked out for all Americans and their enterprises. Whether or not they actually have the support of a cabal of bankers and funders, the right to do a business is a fundamental part of the freedoms that all the citizens of this great nation enjoy. And the MPP will assure that no man will find himself unable to partake of the American dream because of petty legislation or paperwork. Nice. Suppress, suppress, publicly support. Yeah, there's not much there. Cool. So it looks like we can do all three of these. Maintain the economy versus... Oh, we can do all these? I thought we had to be mutually exclusive. Well, let's, let's rush down this line first and see what we can do. Military austerity, that's fine. Just cut it anyways. It really doesn't matter. And cut that off, too. There you go. 80 billion is not bad. Okay. I want to do another... Maybe just do one more run then, just because I don't know. The, to the right side seems probably probably good to do, but we'll see. A robust safety net. Oh, World Series, if you want to about that, please go right ahead. The center. <clears throat> Oh god. May have a wide-ranging variety of policy goals, but Michael Harrington has been tireless and unrelenting in his push for the economic security for the average American. We can give him that much. It's a people's tax money, so if some of it goes back to the social programs, the people won't be complaining. To the far right, we'll just have to emphasize the cost that business could be saving in the long run. Cool. Strike groups, thank you very much. And a place to do business. Political landscape. Yep, there's no there's no bills yet. I, I want to see how bad the bills are because we need to save our PP for bills. 0.53. Oh my goodness, that's not good. Let's get more two, two more stability. Also, please, the center. Oh, uh, actually, maybe. Ooh, can we manually cancel that? I might want to cancel that first just because the center. Everything is pretty good. Everyone's. Oh, the right wing is please. Okay, so we can go to please. Maybe we'll get to please first. Because if we can go from satisfied to pleased, that might be really good. Blue's good, right? Unless you're voting blue or red. We want to vote orange, I guess. Ooh, yes. Suppress Republicans. And, you know, let's just keep going down the center. Let's see what happens. A strong national defense? Politically, it's never been a bad option to blame, blame, blame the Japanese. It's one of the reasons for the MPP's founding and until the RD spectacular failures under Nixon. It was perhaps the sole claim of fame we have. Resisting Japan, of course, requires doubling down on investing in the blunt instruments of national power and convincing the fiscal conservatives in a party that throwing more money at the military is a worthwhile endeavor. Alright, so 1970 South, let's get more max factories. That'll be good. <sighs> Less than 80 billion in debt. And actually, we have no other societal improvements here to speak of, but hey, it's okay. Things are stagnating, but we're providing uh, our future generations the ability to borrow more money if they need to. What's not to love? What is not to love? Yeah, uh, actually, when I was playing... Oh, if you want to buy that, please go ahead. Oh, we did Operation Success. Okay. Um, yeah, when I was playing as Bennett, his, some of his focuses are very long. 49-day focuses are very, very long. A month and a half at a time is a bit extreme, but, you know, it is what it is. 
And one more day left for this. And hopefully they'll be pleased. Let's take a look. They're pleased. Great. So, so far, not too bad. We haven't pissed off too many people yet. But give us time and we'll piss off everyone and make everyone angry at uh, our party. Go and do that one too. Minus 30 billion. We could cut some more, but I think we're okay for now. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Cool, because we did... Because there's 21 billion here. We could actually have done a lot better because with Bennett, I went with like the military research route. And I did the most expensive option, which was like 4% of GDP, which was really bad. So that's why we have 21 billion here. It should be actually a lot better than this, but it is what it is, you know. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, is this Democrats? Yeah, no Democrats. Nope. No Republicans, no Democrats. It's only the NPP. And that's it. Actually, please, please satisfy. Yeah, actually, you know what? Southern, yeah, let's do the Southern Wing. Diverse funding. Federal spending. Nah, maybe I didn't do too much. But, stability's looking not too bad. Minus 19%. It's only minus 19%. But after that, we shall do sit them down. We've traded every single horse we could find, including by dressing up a couple of mules and calling them horses. There have been a marathon negotiating sessions on the hill and innumerable sleepless nights as we've called in favor after favor to pull the party forward. The revised FPP party platform is now largely complete, but Wallace and Harrington are still dragging their feet, refusing to sign until the other does so first. It's time we sat both of them down to talk like adults. And hope that we have enough of the party rank and file on board to shut the two down if we fail to bring them in line. Cool. Oh boy. Cool. So, you gotta love it when people are shouting. That was actually pretty loud last time. But we'll probably just go with the center, uh, his most influential wing, the segregation. So, Jackson's proposal. The summit with Walls and Harrington is getting nowhere, and the congressional MPP delegation is growing nervous at the silence of their leaders. Senator Henry Scoop Jackson of Washington, a man of the center with hawkish instincts of the far right, has requested an urgent meeting with the president to discuss a proposal from the congressional party that he hopes will break the deadlock. Let's hope that this proposal is more coherent than every other attempt a congressional MPP has attempted to work together of their own volition. Let's hope so. That's definitely helpful. So. All right. It's happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. It should be good for us, but coming together. Vice President Agnew surveyed Michael Harrington and George Wallace dourly as they stared ill icily at each other on opposite couches. <clears throat> <clears throat> he leaned over to President Smith. You think we should have ordered some alcohol to get the conversation started? Smith glared back. Don't get your hopes up. If alcohol, alcohol helps solve the MPP's problems, we have drunk Washington dry, and I bet they'll still be staring each other down. <clears throat> Alcohol does lubricate a lot of things, but we get them together to talk about a party platform, and all we hear are crickets, Agnew said. Funny, since there's no shortage of topics, Japan, the unions, those states, rights, agitators, the gosh darn RDs. Smith loud on exasperated sigh, turning to the two solid men. Gentlemen, if neither of you will talk, I can read your talking points aloud. Walls bit first. Mr. Harrington believes that he has all the answers, from the cradle to the grave. A man's entitled to his beliefs, and believe me, the South is plenty, if only Mr. Harrington would listen. Last time the South had plenty of opinions. We had a civil war, Harrington encountered sharply. The struggles of the American people cross regional borders, and a platform that leaves America half wage slave and half free man is one I cannot sign. This is going to be a long day, but that's all right. That's what Mama Smith signed up for. Was it Mama Smith or Grandmama Smith? Either way, she's Mama. <clears throat> Expand the Redstone Arsenal? We don't want Millie's here. Poverty, yeah, a rising tide. By enabling every American citizen to access the welfare programs necessary for their economic security, the MPP will ensure that the American economy as a whole remains vibrant even in the face of the most severe headache. It goes without saying that every beneficiary of these programs will remember the MPP is a party that made it all happen. Oh, cry. I don't want to do more Senate stuff. Oh, no. I just did this like three times off screen. All right, so it looks like everyone's pretty safe towards MPP. Southwest, we might want to do... Um, southwest or East Coast, but everything looks really good. So uh, let's do the Southwest. Everyone, everyone's mostly pleased. To the Southern states. Yeah, so we're fifty. Ready and united to do anything that we need to. Jackson proposal and a rising tide would be good. We can finally approve our poverty right here. Wow, we have sixty-eight billion. Not bad. Pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Uh, research will be done very soon as well. 
And hopefully we can do well. I mean, like, as I showed you earlier, the RDs are looking so bad right now. Th that is collapsed. American Society United. So hopefully we can pull ahead with a few more center MPP members. There's no guarantee, though. But I would hopefully like to get that done. Um, nothing. Yeah, you can do that one. Why not? The fine line. How do we do this? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go over this one more time, Vice President Agnew said. Harrington and Wallace remained as silent as ever as Agnew went down with the agreed items of the MPP's agenda. President Smith watched the unfolding scene with equal parts anticipation and dread. The party commits, more or less, to opposing any policy initiative and momentum carried by the RDs. We will continue to double down on anti-Japanese policy as our key message to the voting public. Agnew read aloud from his notes, to which Harrington and Wallace both nodded. So far, so good, Smith thought cynically. We commit to the minor adjustments to the so social safety net on a federal level, Agnew continued, to Harrington's sharp nod and a faint hiss from Wallace, and in exchange we ensure that states have greater autonomy to set regulatory frameworks and corporate tax regimes. Smith hurriedly interjected. The intervention seemed to mollify Wallace, even though Smith could feel a withering stare from Harrington. It was a scene that would repeat itself multiple times as Smith and Agnew finalized the MPP platform, a hodgepodge of scattershot promises and claims that serve no unified purpose except to keep Harrington and Wallace in the same room with each other. But at the end of the day, as the two leaders of the MPP's faction signed off on the document, President Smith sighed in relief. The party would survive another day. It's about means, not ends. Practical platform. Okay, so we get, actually we get point one now. Nice. That's actually really good. We lost point one. Now we get actually point one, which is pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Actually, you know what we could do? We could risk this. I want to just get rid of that debt as fast as possible. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. We're going to have the, oh, God. The, oh, I forgot about the oil crisis. Actually, that didn't help out that much. Let's fill his vacancy. Did, Another one died? I thought we already filled that one. Oh, whatever. I want to get rid of the debt before the oil crisis hits. We won't be able to hit it, though. We definitely won't be able to. Okay, cool. After Rising Tide, we'll do expand the Redstone Arsenal because we'll probably need both. No, just one. Okay. And I want to go to the state as she goes just so we get some more PP and improve American society. A strong and prosperous nation. The shipyards of San Diego, the auto plants of Detroit, the steel mills of Appalachia, the brokerages of New York, and the military contractors in the South. American industry roars back to life, invigorated by the promise of economic renewal and the nation's renewed stand against the Japanese menace. For those who still suffer from want and deprivation, the government will prevent from, from falling through the cracks and so that they may one day share in an American dream once again, with malice towards nuns and charity for all onwards. Cool. And we have how many days left? 11 days, not too bad. And let's get ready to go ahead and get some more people in here, hopefully. Oh, safe RD. Oh, no, no, no. We gotta do the Rockies. Leading MPP, that's good, that's good. Leading MPP, the Republicans are probably going to get kicked out, maybe. RD, we did the Southwest, we didn't do so well there. The Deep South, RD victory. What? In Mississippi. If it's a Republican, that's not bad. But, hmm, hmm, hmm. Which one do we want to? Oh, the Deep South. Deep South, come on, guys. Mississippi, are you, are you okay? Satisfied, please, please. Very good, strike groups, why not? Uh, actually, let's do some artillery. We're not going to be able to go to war, probably, anyways, but still. A rising tide. Great. Strong and prosperous? Yes, please. The American people ask what the MPP stands for, and we have answered them. Further consolidate our support base, depending on which faction we favored. Well, we did the best we could. Protecting our citizens. We'll especially in the south, expand the arsenal, invest in southern air bases. Make it more popular in the state. In this one state? Okay, well... Choosing a Scots nominee. Well, currently it is what? Let's scroll up and do. That's collapse, which is good. 44 RDs and 54. Oh, we don't have Hawaii yet. That's true. Um, seven. We'll go with the liberal option. Six and three. Still, not bad. Balance them out. George Wallace might not like that, but that's okay for now. So, we'll do a say she goes. Maybe we need a strong and prosperous nation as well as one of these two. So... Protecting our citizens, shall we? Americans deserve to live in safety, both physical and economic. Our nation's laws, enforcement, and judicial system will have the resources to fully enforce the law, while new job training programs and community outreach will prevent our most desperate from turning to criminality in the first place. Only by addressing both the motivations and the occurrence of crime in our society will America be safe enough to step into the new decade. Very cool. Alright, 77. More resources? Uh, this one first. Cool. And a few more days left. Hopefully we can do well here. Hopefully, hopefully. But then, uh, debt, yeah, 61 billion. Not bad. A, ah, good. A solid campaign is nice to see. Strong and prosperous nation. Thank you. Protecting our citizens. Absolutely. There's a respectable campaign. Well, good for them. 
Steady as she goes. Bills are debated, amended, and passed in committee and in the full Congress with only minor delays and hiccups. Our congressmen and campaign managers increasingly speak with one message to the voters. The arguments over civil rights, social welfare, and incentivizing business now take place behind closed doors. <clears throat> Away from the eyes of the press. Harrington and Wallace still don't like each other and hardly trust each other, but they're still talking to each other. After years of de debilitating and bickering and public ridicule, the MPP is finally starting to act like a political party, pursuing a brighter future for all Americans rather than obsessing over the failings of the RDs, whether that will be enough to convince voters remains to be seen nice very good that's exactly what we want but we'll get that as soon as we can resources yes even though we're doing quite well in resources minus 30 billion that's so nice please don't implode too fast oh wow well looks like these guys are probably gonna die they're led by yugoda oh poor Southland. well a bunch of anarchists are beating up yugoda wow that is that is something and let's go ahead and do the... Which one do you want to do with this one? MPP, Southwest or Deep South? Ooh, East Coast. Let's do East Coast. A lot of this is toss-up. East Coast. Central East Coast. Yes, please. Nice. Still 30. Everyone's still satisfied. We've not pissed off too many people yet. Which is probably good for the elections. I hope we have eight years of content, but I really don't think we do. All right. Anything else here? Oh, yeah. It's Mole Civvies. Mole Civvies, son. Mole Civvies. But yeah, I actually took out Africa, the Africa Shield, pretty darn quickly. Oh, I might have lost a division or two. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm pretty sure I lost one division. But whatever. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Always, It's always fun fighting foreign wars. Well, as long as you're not dying in them. Or in real life. But whatever. But so there she goes. Great. That will hopefully only help us. So now we have to decide what we want to do next. We can go back up here and do stuff up here. We can do the Japanese stuff up here as well. Defender Nation? Yeah, that would probably be good. Pulls update, that's fine, whatever. Uh, maintain the economy. We could probably do that one. President Margaret Chase Smith is faced with a dilemma. How to balance her promises to both the nation's businesses and uh, her promises uh, and the nation's progressive political elements. From the very impetus of her campaign for president, Smith has openly advertised herself as pro-business, a political position de destined to gain wide traction in terms of monetary support, no doubt. However, the presidency itself comes with caveats, one of which is that campaign's promises are often only half-fulfilled. The CMPP, the General Progressive Party of the U.S., begrudgingly supported Smith during her presidential campaign and now expects her to support their pro-labor demands under the leadership. And with the support of Smith administration, the CMPP could unravel the president's business support, killing her chances at re election. If she is to maintain her popularity, she will have to walk the tightrope between worker welfare and business support. Cool. Let's get some better guns. Or improvements, at least. Cool. Let's see what happens with that last focus. Advanced artillery. We go from basic to advanced. Not bad. Hey, great. It's still a campaign. We love it. 55 billion. Funded laser munitions. Oh. Does that help us with the cost? That was ARPA the thing. Stockholm Conference opening. If you want to be about that, please go right ahead. How will the Germans respond? It's probably going to go break down. So there she goes. Decline a hotline. Um, We'll stall. A minor setback? Sure. That's fine. Talks will succeed. We've made history. Cool. Margaret Chase Smith, the woman for the job. Oh, and now we probably want to do what? Southwest, RD victory, safe... What the heck? No, 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 no. Even the Rockies. And the West Coast. The Deep South is a toss-up. That's better now. <clears throat> oh, boy. A lot of Republicans are up for seats, though. Tilt MPP. We'll see what happens. Speech writing advice, though. Stacked on Agnew... Uh, Spiro Agnew's desk were three typewritten speeches delivered by the aide straight from the Oval Office. The vice president left them as they were the first late for lunch break. The speeches themselves might have been the carbon copies of each other at first covers glance with the same words, same margins, even the same headings, excepting every copy's page 8. In the first draft's version, President Smith spent three whole paragraphs extolling the virtues of expanded, if not universal, health care. The specific initiatives in her administration will enthusiastically pursue towards the ad end. The seconds replaced the aforementioned excerpts with detailed plans for improving labor protection for every American worker. The third had page 8, and as much as it lacked page 12, vague, offhanded references to poverty relief dispersed throughout the text substituted for condensed policy proposals that took up a whole leaf. When Agnew returned, he immediately fed two of the drafts to a paper shredder. The secretary turned blank to the president afterwards. First draft, second draft, third draft. Ooh. Expanded healthcare, so that's probably the left. Second replaced aforementioned with details plus for improving labor protections. Or a third, uh, uh, it's kind of vague. 
Let's do the second draft. We'll do the middle one. I always want to do the middle one, so. Labor's demand. Don't promise too much. Don't promise too little. Promoting general welfare. Slight boost of popularity. Um, we can, yeah, that seems pretty good. Especially during election year. Fighting tyranny. Um, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I would maybe like to get started with this stuff. Maybe. So... Uh, we can do that one, but I'll go do this one first. The Federation. President Smith had made it clear. America will never, ever surrender again to the fascists and tyrants of the world. America will be great and whole again, and the people will know that the sacred mission of the American people will be to defend freedom and justice in a world that cries out for both, but to do that, the armed forces must be made fit for purpose, capable of projecting American power to defend its allies and credibly deter its nuclear armed foes. Increase the influence and support of the right-leaning element. Increase the influence and support of the left ones, which is kind of fine since the left it doesn't really exist for us right now, so... It is what it is. Let's get some radar. Better radar stuff. Uh, we will have to deal with the oil crisis too soon, probably. Alright, so the next one we'll probably do is New England? Maybe New England? Either New England, Deep South, or... Ooh, Southwest. New England, Deep South, or Southwest. It doesn't really matter which one, so... Rockies are bad too. West Coast, maybe? Uh, we'll probably do New England. The Southwest is pretty bad. We're doing the Southwest currently. We'll probably do New England. Cool. Mm. Oh, we can actually do some stuff over here. Let's see. Satisfied, please be significant. That's good. Center's doing very, very well. We'll probably do some labor protections. So, that'll probably be for the best. Alright. We can't suppress people here yet, which kind of sucks, but we can strengthen pro American sentiment. Nice. We can only get 0.75, but if we do that, there you go. 52 billion. Sudan is doing stuff. Alright. RDs are in a respectable campaign in the Deep South, which is fine with us. Fine, fine, fine with us. After we defend our nation. Oh, pulls it up there. That's nice. Good work, everybody. Um, I do want to go probably do promoting general welfare next. The American economy, while certainly not the worst in the world, could do far better than at its present time. In almost 200 years of existence, the economy has been seldom worse. More than 20% of Americans live in poverty, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The nation's GDP has seen stagnant growth since the end of the Second World War. Far less would, than would be expected, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Americans lack access to basic necessities such as clean drinking water. All in all, the U.S. of A. is in a bad shape, luckily for the states, however. It is the President and Congress who mostly recognize the issue and are willing to do anything to put an end to it. While President MCS wants most Americans to have access to welfare programs that would allow for the poor and infirm to get back on their feet, she also knows that the federal budget cannot allow for massive expansion of welfare. As such, the President and her allies in Congress would attempt to push through a new federal budget to cut back on wasteful projects and allocate the excess funding to a new welfare program, one that would primarily assist those who cannot assist themselves. Slight boost of popularity, which is good, and please southern populace and left wing of the party, which is probably really good. No matter what, we want to make sure that everyone likes us or as much as possible. All right, let's go ahead and do... I want to do the Southwest, really, but I said New England, right? Oh, safe NPP, safe RDs. I don't know about that, man. West Coast. Oh, man, I just said what I wanted to do. Oh, Art MPP, Great Lakes. Oh, oh, toss-up? Ooh, I don't like those toss-ups. Oh, man, Deep South or East Coast. Let's do East Coast. I forget. The 1970 Defense Review. The chamber of the Senate Armed Services Committee was full of bursting, occupied by the... Oh, crap. Uh... Mavens of Washington's Defense Establishment, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the Secretaries and Service Chiefs of the Armed Forces made camp to the right of the days. The Congre Congregation of Policy Analysis and Hill Staffers took position on the left. Together, they waited for the Senators to open the first hearing of the Smith Administration's 1970 Defense Review, one of the many documents highlighting the NPP's decisiveness against the fascist threat. The Committee Chairman called the room to order. As of li late last evening, Secretary of Defense Dennis had sent the 1970 Defense Review to this committee. The Administration hoped that this strategy, reflecting the painful lessons of South Africa, will mark a shift in our defense policy, with the Navy and Air Force leading the charge against the Empire of Japan. The crowd nodded uh, sagely, or sagely, with the exception of two men, the Secretary of the Army and Army Chief of Staff. They are aware of the document's contents in a prior draft. They had raised concerns of the Army's reduced role, or so they had thought. They most definitely had argued against cutting the Army's budget, and they had been ignored. More than a little blindsided, the Army leadership floundered through their testimony in a desperate rear guard action. When the committee broke for coffee, coffee, the Chief of Staff to Ashton Telephones, what the heck is going on? We have nine days. Does this spawn the oil crisis immediately? Oh god, I don't want to lose progress for this. I really don't. We might have to, though. We might. Oh, please don't kill us off with this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please don't spawn. Please don't spawn yet. We're halfway through this, literally. Ah. The machine faltered. Oh, no, 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 no. If you want to about that, please go ahead. This is about the oil crisis. Oh, boy. As a council, whatever focus we're currently working on. So, if we have 10 days left, or, yeah, 10 days, we will be able to get this one done and then do stuff about the oil crisis. 
Oh, okay, so we're still cutting down debt. Even with all the stuff we've done so far, we're still cutting down the debt, which is pretty nice. We still... Oh, God, no. God, oil prices, why? Who do we have to invade to get more oil? Please. Please, I just want oil. All right, there we go. We can do that now. Cool. All right, then. Well, we're over here now. No, we're over here. Yeah. Oh, for any fumes, if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. The earth bleeds. But as long as we're still cutting down debt, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And we still have one still going on, which is not bad, actually. Not too bad. They're on a respectable campaign. Well, good for them. No one cares right now. And they're... Ever even the left wing is pleased. Even though they're irrelevant, they're still pleased. The fascists are no threat, but... That's great. Oh, God dang it, guys. I We want to do well. They're not do poorly. And let's see. Can we suppress? Ah, the Republicans. No, thank you. No, no, no. Not this timeline. Ah, oh, God dang it. Uh, the Great Lakes. They'll do the Great Lakes next, probably. Yeah. Let's toss up. Either the Great Lakes or Southwest. Either one. I'd rather do the Southwest, maybe. But, yeah, the Great Lakes, too. Great, Great Lakes. I gotta keep saying that in my mind, so make sure I do it, actually. This is so bad. Bulls are updated. Let's see on the horse race. We're running on fumes? Yes, we are. That's gotta suck on your first year in office. That really sucks. Hey, in Southwest. No, no, Great Lakes. We'll do Great Lakes this time. Cool. If you want to read about everything's bigger in Texas, uh, please go right ahead. Get a little more fuel. FX of the oil crosses will be reduced, which is very good. Very, very good to see. And okay, that down. Oh, 3.1 billion. The Earth bleeds. Well, hey, good job, guys. The Oza Ages turns once more. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. This is, happens every single time, so. Hey, minus 700 billion? Foreign capital? Oh. Subsidizing your companies will have some effect in countering economic collapse, but for more lasting support, we should look into foreign capital. New two nations in Europe, like Sweden and Switzerland, are begging to invest in our companies, so it's time to give them the go ahead. Let the foreign money flow and get our economy back on track. Welcome, financial ambassadors. Oh, Iraq. Never change, Iraq. Look at some more fuel since it makes more sense right now to get some more. Ah, oh, it's so little money. And then we'll do set the prices. If you want to read about that, please go ahead as well. Cool. Because uh, synthetic alternative is not bad. I just don't want to lose PP yet. RD's run a central thingamabob. Crash and burn. Nice. Very good. Keep doing that, guys. And was this Democrats? Yes. No, 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 no to the Democrats right now. No, thank you. Please, 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 please. And the fascists are ambivalent. Influential. All these groups are influential. Hey, a stellar campaign. Very nice. Wow, that took out 0 0.06 billion. That is so bad. Low noise amplification. Metro austerity. Go and do that one. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, technology really doesn't matter at this point anymore. Uh, tank stuff. There you go. Get some better tanks. Even though I deleted all of our tank divisions already. And let's do... We can do the West Coast, probably. MPP victory is likely. Uh, Southwest. Deep South. Deep South or East Coast. Deep South. Let's go East Coast. Get as many, rid of many Republicans as possible. 52.5 billion. Setting the prices. Very, very good. If you'd like to read about the Federal Energy Office, please go right ahead. It hurts our PP. But PP doesn't really matter too much right now. And if you want to read about capitals, commodities, please go right ahead. Sell, sell, sell. That doesn't change much, and we got 10 million more in depth, so that's not bad. Polls are updated. Let's check on the horse race. And the horse race is almost done as well. So, hopefully we can get a few more senators. This is where we're currently at. 21, 23, R's and D's. 14 center MPPs, and 40 far-right MPPs. I don't mind if the far-right goes down a little bit more, but... As long as the center goes up a little bit more, I, I will definitely like that quite a bit. That, oh, what is that? Is that? Was that the thing that was hurting us? I can't remember. There's a lot of research we invested in earlier. 62 million, that's not very much at all. Oh, boy. But, hey, with no interest on the debt, we're doing very well, so. Oh, crap. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, nope. Sorry, we gotta cut that. We're cutting that. Nope, no spending here. Awesome. And then we'll do enforced rationing. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Nice, run a respectable campaign. It's November 7th and 8th. Uh, cool. Class 1. Oh, boy. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Democratic defending their seat. They lost 13 Republicans, 5 Democratic par uh, Democratic Senators as well, 13 Senator, Repu uh, Senator MPP Senators were elected, and 5 more far-right. My gosh. The Republican Party lost almost all, all told, so, so many seats to the MPP Center. Oh, that's so good. Oh, we love it. Uh, I love using the CIA against our enemies. We have 8 Republicans, 18 Democrats, 27 Senator MPPs, and 45 far-right Senators. Oh, that's so good. 
Oh, that's so nice. That is so nice. If you want to read about the synthetic alternative, please go right ahead, but... Oh, that's so good. If we need to pass any bill, we could probably pass it. There's so few Republican senators now, but... Which is kind of important for what we need. But whatever, it is It is okay. It's okay. Everyone's happy with the choices. Just like us. We can just do it because we can. Cool. So really, yeah, even with all Republicans, we have 35 support. We only need 15. You might be able to get one from Democrat. Uh, but yeah, this is looking pretty darn good for us so far. And we'll do it disaster averted. If you like to read about that as well, please go ahead. We get some more political power, which is great. We get more stability and a momentary embolism. Nice. And how is this hurting us now? Can we actually build some more stuff up? Oh, 20 and 2 is not great, but not bad. Well done, gentlemen. Very good, very good. And build more civvies. We're all about cutting down that debt right now. I can't wait for Tino 2 someday, or at least a reworked America, when uh, you can maybe eventually actually get rid of the effects of the oil crisis, because they'll always be there. Because it's, it's the scope of that is just very large, which makes sense. Don't get me wrong. That makes sense completely, but still. Uh, there's really not much we can do here, and we're still... The MPP is ready for anything. We've destroyed, basically, the R's and D's support, which is awesome. But up next, let's see. America here? Ooh. Become more popular among poor voters. Our expenses will rise. I won't do that one yet. It's from Sea to Shining Sheep. If you want to look at that, read about that, please go ahead. The Pan Arabs in Cairo. Oh, wait, what? I'm not doing that yet. Nope. I don't really care about the Middle East. Which is weird to say as American. We don't care about the Middle East here. I'll do this one. There you go. Cool. And we'll continue with what? Yeah, a new republic. We give them political power. We don't care. This doesn't really do anything for us at all. Yeah, I can help a humanitarian aid. No thanks, man. Pfft. We're not going to get involved. Material direct assistance. Across burning sense? Heck no. From sea to shining sea? Now we can do whatever we want. More unified. That might be bad actually to grab. Uh, AmeriCare. I kind of see what happens if we do this. AmeriCare. Among the most disadvantaged individuals in American society are the elderly. Only about 60% of Americans aged 65% or 65 years and older have access to health insurance. The elderly often bankrupt themselves or drain their life savings trying to keep up with bills from their often necessary medical care for a group of people far more likely to suffer health problems. This news is plainly unacceptable. In order to rectify this issue, the President and her allies in Congress will have drafted a new bill to create a new federal program to assist the elderly, AmeriCare. This new health care program, all Americans over age of 65 of, age, of years of age, or those suffering from serious lifelong conditions, will become subject to government-provided health insurance. AmeriCare will not discriminate along racial or monetary grounds either, with full coverage regardless of race, gender, income, or other factors. While it may be difficult to fit in the budget, sometimes compassion is more important than cash. A momentary emblemism? If you want to about that, please go ahead. Back to normal-ish. Nice. And now we have... 20, 20, 20, four, four and a, almost four and a half. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Oh, so three of these guys, none of the Democrats, all of these guys, and half of the far right too. So with 27 plus 27 is usually over 50. I could be wrong, but happy 1971, everyone. Happy 1971. Uh, 27 plus 27 is usually like 54, usually. So we're actually pretty good. I thought more Republicans would support us with this. But with the far right so large that we have enough already of their support, so... Hey, minus one point... That's not bad. Minus 1.2 billion. That's pretty darn good. And we have to spend, don't have to spend a PP yet. We can just sit on our hands and do that. Awesome. Labor demands. Uh, economic security. That's going to cost more. So labor demands. Ever since the Industrial Revolution and the genesis of modern labor systems, relations between businesses and their laborers have remained shaky, to say the least. There just remains true for the contemporary U.S. For the past three decades, wages have only risen slightly in comparison to the increase in cost of living and decrease in value of the dollar. Consequently... Economic progressivism has seen a massive resurgence in the CNPP and other groups, and have they become so vocal about the rhetoric that they have now impossible to ignore? Darn. President Margaret Chase Smith is famously a pro-employer, but should she wish to pass some of her legislation, she must gain support of the CNPP. As outright pushing for pro-employment policies, or employee policies, is out of the question, the President believes that the better relations between businesses and laborers is the most effective and prudent solution to the problem. With the empowerment of the National Labor Board, Board Relations Board, the employer employee system may see improvement, and America passes the Senate. Margaret J. Smith was not the type of person to indulge in excess. The past few years have been nothing but a deluge of events worth celebrating, but Smith was never allowed herself to relax and enjoy the moment. Even back in November, when the Associated Press announced her victory and the NPP HQ exploded in a hurricane of hurric cheers and hoorays, she left the party as soon as the cameras turned off, returning to her office to put some finishing touches on her foreign policy concept. But today, Smith decided to celebrate. It was nothing massive, of course, a mere flute of champagne before today's stack of paperwork. <clears throat> 
But the entire dress herself was all that mattered. After decades of work of politics and endless traveling across the American continent, she was finally accomplished something monumental. People rarely feel the effects of whatever goes on in Washington, but this bill was sure to fundamentally change the lives of millions of Americans for the better. Her campaign was all about Japan and Germany, but Smith herself never forgot about the nation that mattered the most, America. Margaret took one last sip of champagne before returning to her duties. It was remarkably sweet, a taste that sh reminded her of her younger years, back when she was nothing but an office worker at Daniel E. Cummings Woolen Company and had enough time for a regular social life. Enough time to go out with her friends or have friends at all. Sometimes she missed these times, but days like these, this one, reminded her that giving it all up has been very much worth it. She put her glasses aside and went back to work. Her term was far from being over, and it was the most utter, utmost responsibility to use every single second of it. It was her duty to save America, and a lot had to be done. Oh, crap, now that killed me. Oh, my gosh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, getting that other expenditure really killed me here. Holy crap, that's just not good. But, economic security for all Americans... Oh, we could do that. Oh, I want to go down this one pretty quickly. Pick a stance on unions. Let's do it with maternity leave. One of the most important things for an infant is a familial connection, the bond formed with the father and mother. Yet for decades, women have been refused to leave from work to care for the children following birth. For such a crucial time in infantile development, precious little attention is given to it by law. While well, it's true that some employers will allow new mothers to take perhaps a few undaid pays or weeks off of work to care for the ch child or children, many do not. Consequently, many new moms are either forced to leave their children at home with a babysitter while they work an increasingly expensive proposition or take their infants to work with them where they put immense stress on their mothers. As most politicians are male, relatively few are more aware of this problem than Mark President MCS. She knows better than most that women do not only deserve maternity leave, but require it. Raising new generations is neither easy nor cheap, and thus the president will press state legislatures to pass laws and mandate maternity leave, preferably of the paid variety, And th when things go well. I do believe we all know why I called you both tonight. To Margaret Chase Smith's left sat Michael Harrington, to her right sat Daddy Strom Thurmond. Both switched between boring holes into her skull, skull and into their opposites through sheer force of will. Cigar smoke wafted from an ashtray just beyond her shaky fingertips atop a table carved out of a shipwreck. The grandfather clock had just struck an ungodly hour, ten midnight, quarter to four. My goodness. The president sat, what a perfect microcosm of the MPP. God willing, an inaccurate one came. She glanced at the clock, its arms fixed at half past two the early morning. One moment stretched into several dozen as, so, as neither Smith nor Harrington nor Thurman said a word. Then, lips wavering yet pers pursed, the Missourian spoke up. It's agreeable. Harrington admitted, not optimal, not sufficient, not even acceptable. But someone, he side-eyed a certain senator, will do their darndest to block the vote himself if we ask for more. For once I agree with the communists, replied Thurman, as at the least. We've made fair con concessions for the party's sake. Repercussions can be handled later. Now is the time we show the RDs of America that have made the best choice in the 20 gosh darn years. Disbelief gave way to relief, and Margaret's weight against a velvet-lined chair. For lack of anything worthwhile to say, she pinned the lit cigar between her fingers and welcomed Havana into shriveled lungs. Care for smoke, gentlemen? Nice. Very cool. Ask the industries. Oh, we can do the right to unions. I kind of want to do both. We probably will be able to do both sides. Maybe our uh, skies. Let's do that one. Restoring American greatness in the face of the Japanese menace requires rebuilding the Navy, most notably the Pacific Fleet, displaced to San Diego ever since the fall of Hawaii. The Smith administration will budget for an unpre uh, unprecedented shipbuilding program to restore American command of the seas, a floating wall of steel to strike fear into the hearts of tyrants and embolden the friends of freedom across the world. God, I wish we could cut down the debt. <laughs> I hope Toolbox already comes out someday and we can just, like, slash that beast. Slash it. Slash it more. And we'll read one more book after this. Uh, which one do we want to do? Keep them calm? Oh, talk to Big Pharma? Let's do that one. Pharmaceutical companies, collectively labeled as Big Pharma by the public due to their tendency for mutual business co co cooperation, effectively run the American medical industry. Without them, hundreds of thousands to millions of Americans would die or suffer as they lost access to medicines and prescription drugs. As such, it is safe to say that without at least some cooperation from them, healthcare programs like AmeriCare will fall flat on their face as they run out of money. President Smith and her allies in Congress will meet with Big Pharma to lay out a plan for the subsidization of pharmaceuticals, in return for giving the U.S. government cheap drugs for the new healthcare programs. But, if you enjoyed the episode, Please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will balloon the debt a little bit more and see what else MC has, MCS has in store. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.